This is uh, James Price, who I met at the Edinburgh Festival. Was it last year? Aye, aye last year, aye, aye. Um, met at the festival last year, uh, kindly come up and says about my, my film, okay, um, which I completely and fucking ripped it apart as but, I was yeah. going, it's shite, it's shite, but thanks, thanks man. Um, and then, so when I was there, I went to see uh, James's film, uh, Boys Night, which uh, I loved. Um, so we kind of online kind of connected that way. I definitely, definitely. You know, over the last year. So, so I just wanted to do this uh, wee video, we did it, turn it into a podcast and turn it into a video, and just said we'd get together and talk about filmmaking, talk about your stuff. And uh, so, in terms of how, do, how did you, how did you get, you, you've, um, I mean, you've met your a director now as well. Did you start purely on writing, and how did you? St- why? How did you start? What was the start? I did kind of so. Um, I think I always wanted to uh, direct, but um, in my teenage years, uh, I kind of just taught myself how to write screenplays by uh, I have the script and I'd watch the film. What was the first gem that you thought I want to I want to write? What was the, the what first? Was you know, as I weighing as a kid, I was obsessed with like Stephen King and the, the most Stephen King films, was essentially the John Carpenter ones really. Right. But I, I always blew my mind like just it was Stephen King's Christine or right. Stephen King's whatever. And uh, I think that might have been like a part of my writing thing. Like, uh, but then my teens, I definitely think annoyingly like uh, it became uncool to say it now. But Tarantino kind of blown up. There was a buzz about it, and I do remember the first proper script I got was uh, my Maz Pals house. I found it in my boys' room, it was a Pulp Fiction, like right. uh, book version of the script. And uh, I remember taking the stairs, reading it in front of her, and kind of hinting, like, I want this. And uh, yeah, yeah. she said, you can take it home if you want. And then that was kind of like the first, I remember being really confused by it, like, just the, the, the format of screenwriting. Right, right. And that kind of just planted it in me, like, this is interesting, like, there's something here. And, like, through watching the film and reading the script, I kind of... Yeah got a wee buzz for it. Yeah. And then I started downloading scripts. I used to download, like, my, my uncle would download me scripts for, like, uh, Freddy vs. Jason films that never got made, like, all the different <laughs> ones. And I used to be obsessed with, like, just trying to find aye. the script of a film. I remember in the, in the early days of the internet, you could download scripts. I'd done the same. Oh, they were everywhere, aye. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember doing that. Um, but in terms of your film watching, were you... Um, I mean, I'm older than you. I, I started way back in the, the early 80s with the VHS came out watching aye. VHS. Did you, what was your, what, did you watch film? Was that your main? Aye, aye, oh definitely. I, no, it was VHS, man. The first mm. ten, I, I, I had the biggest video collection of all my pals growing up, man. Uh, I was dead, I was really into horror as a kid. So it started to do, I'd say for about, my mom and dad were brand new, they kind of just let me watch whatever I wanted and mm. uh, they used to always tell me to go to school and say, like, tell your if teachers, ask, tell them we like you watch the making of it and how it worked in case they try and get us in trouble. But uh, I, like, I was obsessed with Chucky, Jason, Freddy, all that for like 7 to 11. And then around about 12, around about that point, I started getting into like Scarface and I kind of started right. getting, like, I remember just seeing, like, I just remember seeing the Scarface posters and taxi driver posters and they've yeah. just been like ingrained everywhere and right. knowing my dad liked it and knowing one day I'll probably watch that and get into it. And uh, so I kind of graduated the horror films into kind of the popular crime films. Well, that's what I was asking because somebody used to ask me, oh, did, what um, films did you get influenced in Scotland when you were a kid? And it's like, there wasn't really any. It was Gregory's Girl in the 1980s, <laughs> you know, there wasn't a lot of big Scottish, so my, my influence was American films mainly. Aye, I'll say more mainly, any, definitely for me. There wasn't any, a lot of Scottish films. The only films. one, man, the only one that really did, I can say, was a bit of an influence was Orphans, the Peter Mullins first film, and that was purely because... Uh, I remember just being a buzz with my mom and my dad and my pals passing it about. Like, kind of well, that's when films were starting to come in. So ah, I'm definitely. I've got 20 no, years I, ago. No, 100%, <laughs> no, definitely, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. But even then, there wasn't much. I mean, you get like, one a year, you know what I mean? You yeah, get like uh, the, yeah. the Rock and Watch, you get Riff Raff, My Name yeah. is Joey. There wasn't yeah, much yeah. else, really, you know what I mean? Aye, aye. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which is a big reason why I kind of like, um, like pasty faces was a big <laughs> deal, man. I do, you know, people didn't want to see it. But it was, man. I'm like, over generally, it, so yeah. right, you know. But generally, like, I remember mm. that being such a buzz. Like, me and, like, uh, like all my pals had that on video, man. Like, uh, it was in every global video, and we all had it. And and, well, global video had gotten an invite to the premiere, and there was about 50 people, distributors around Scotland for a global video. They all got an invite. My mother, my mother invited them, and I said, what are you Aye. inviting me? And she, she was right. Because I went to the local video store, and there was two Robert De Niro movies with some shitty Robert De Niro movie. There was 50 <laughs> copies of Pasty Faces. Aye, and definitely. Like, Fuck. Aye. You know, no, I remember um, like I honestly remember like being about I must have only been about twelve, maybe younger, and driving past the Yellow Bird Cafe on Paisley Road West. Aye, that's where we shot. And me and my mom and my dad, and I'd be like, that's a fucking chop at a pasty faces. Aye, like it was aye. a wee buzz every time we passed it. Like, 
That's Which, that was a big part, man, of Jane like scene. Well, there was big foot, 40 foot billboards in the streets, and people used to stop me in the street and go, uh. oh, is that you? And I go, that's not me. I was that fucking <laughs> that was asshole. I was that bad. <laughs> that I would even deny that was me only. Yeah, yeah. I was that bad. But yeah, that was, I mean. Uh, but I stand by this, it's the closest Scotland's ever got to that. John Favreau, uh, Vince Vaughn, Swingers, made type vibe. <laughs> oh. uh, actually, that's my well, I'm glad you noticed a wee fraction no, in there. So true. Because I was actually watching Swingers. Yeah. I went to make a trailer. I'm not going to get her worried that, but I went yeah. to make a trailer in Las Vegas in LA and I was watching Swingers Aye. before I went. And I was obsessed with that. Aye, definitely. So yeah. that was one of my influences, even though it was fuck all like it. You know? um, but yeah, Swingers was a big influence. Oh, 100%. I definitely. Know, they turn up yeah. to, they turn out of Vegas and they go, this place is buzzing, this, but this place is a fucking shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> <It's> definitely. <laughs> <Do you laughs> <what I mean? laughs> um, so yeah. I just still got one of my favourite lines and it's such an obscure joke that's in the film and it's, uh, I can't remember the other guy's name, but when he's, he's a, I think he's at the bandstand at Kilman Grove, doing like lines aye, with each other. Aye, Al McCaffrey. Aye, yeah. and he says, uh, he quotes Val Pacino and Heat, and he's got a good, 50 dead going. bodies of yeah. Venice Boulevard, Justin. Justin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, man. Genuinely still makes me laugh, man. Though, when, when, when I first met him, he was yeah. committed with stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Aye, definitely, definitely. You know, it's, it's no, Alan was some, Well, Alan um, was uh, the Jerry Butler. It was meant to be Jerry Butler. Ah, interesting, interesting. And, uh, and I'm not going to hold this thing. No, you know, no, definitely. Man, but no, just a wee quick thing. Aye. Uh, no, uh, the producer sent me to meet Jerry Butler. He was just starting it, really. Aye. And uh, I met him in the CCA. Had a pipe with him. He was a great guy. And I said to him, "You can You agreed to cast Alan. Aye. Because he was like the Jerry Lewis sort of character. Aye, was kind definitely. Of quirky, was comedy. And I was a sweet Aye. guy. So I says, you it would says, have been two straight guys. We've yeah. got the same agent. The producer, yeah. we've got the same agent as the butler uh, agent. And I said, just meet him and say, thanks for whatever. And try and give him one of the other parts. And I went, oh, you fucking asshole. <laughs> and so I went to meet him. And then he was going to a premiere, his wee, one of his wee films. And he says, come along to the premiere. So I went and he says, we'll talk afterwards. You've seen the film. And yeah. I, I walked out the back door. I felt oh, so fuck. fucking bad. Because they had gone great with him. Aye. And he was full of energy. Aye. I couldn't tell he was going to be a big name. I couldn't no, tell that. No, definitely, definitely. But he was yeah. too good looking for a part. Aye, I don't definitely, definitely. But that was, that was, and now I've got a ribbon for years. Like, you, yeah. and like, you never cast Jerry. Who knows, yeah. maybe if you cast him, Alan would have been in White House Town right now. could have got Daniel Craig for a fucking <laughs> yeah. day and all. No, definitely, aye, yeah. And uh, he was on the thing me and, and Laura Fraser, uh, who was in Breaking Bad. Oh, aye, she's great, man. She was a beat, so, though. Aye, aye so, uh, but yeah, yeah, anyway, anyway. So, uh, yeah, so, um, so when you first started uh, uh, writing, what was your first sort of approach to actually, I've got something written, what did you do with it? You know? oh, I, I, one of the first things, are like, uh, I remember, I remember I, I, like, two terrible ideas that I remember trying, really trying hard to write when I was about 14, 15, and one was a guy staying by himself in a flat, and there's a spider in the corner of the wall, and he keeps killing the spider every day, and it keeps coming back, coming back, mm. coming back. And then one day he gets a shotgun, shoots the wall, and then just millions of spiders come out. And right. essentially, I've never realised this, but I grew up watching Creep Show, and it's essentially the exact same right. as one of the right. stories in Creep Show. I must have subconsciously ripped right. off. Right. But I wanted to do that, and uh, then I had another one, which actually I, was, I didn't finish until I was like fucking 17. It was like a, about a guy trying to kill himself and keeps messing it up. And which I think is quite common for like a lot of like student filmmakers. It seems to be a lot of people making that same film. But uh, <laughs> thankfully, they, but I thought it was a short film. I, was like, I found it recently. It was like seventy pages, man. I was like, I fucking what a feature. I didn't realise what I was doing. But um, yeah. I would I would write me films too, like we scripts from my pals, like just slagging them, and uh, I'll be slagging one person, and I'd be sending that about, like just right. like a wee, wee scripts, right. just to prove to my pals that I could write a script right. almost. What was the time that you said you made a, you actually shot one on an iPhone or something? Aye, two, aye, on an iPhone. Aye. What was that like? That was, uh, oh, that's awful, man. That's so right. bad. It's still out there somewhere. I'm not even going to say the name of it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it is on YouTube, is man. Because it's, right. it's not on my channel, so I can't oh, take right, it down. Right, right. So it's up there for the time being. But uh, it's awful. And it was essentially with two iPhone 4s mm. and an iPod Touch. Right. And we shot this wee thing. We'd, I knew we couldn't record sound. I didn't know why to record fucking camera sound with a yeah. phone. Uh, so it's completely silent. I made the whole thing blue on Windows Movie Maker, so I felt like it was like a Michael Mann film, so it was just horrible, black oh, and white, yeah. blue. <laughs> fucking, I just looked at it, and then essentially that is just a rip off of the Pine Barrens episode of The Sopranos. Like, right. really, it's a Pine, oh, right, right, it's a Pine right. Barrens episode oh, of The Sopranos hilarious. with absolutely no sound. Oh, yeah. But I two of my pals of Springborn, three years went up, man, and with no money. And I remember we're driving about, like, uh, one of the characters in it just has all these weapons, like knives and hatchets. And we're driving about like me and my other power in the back seat, and in the front passenger seat we're just filled with weapons. Right. 
and I'm thinking, we were all thinking, oh, he's already get put on the post, just show him a script. Like, we were, I mean, we're all looking at CDs time. <laughs> we're all looking at probably fucking three years each. <laughs> uh, we got lucky, man, but... Uh, but I generally know, man, even though that film turned out terrible, and uh, I'm really, like, it, it gave me the bug, like, it gave me a real bug to keep doing it. But that's, that's, the, that's the whole point of doing things. Aye, definitely, 100%. You that energy, aye. that buzz, and then you learn, and you, you know, um, I think you've got to make those things. Definitely, you know, aye, you, you know? definitely. Um, so when did, you t- when did you get to the level where you wrote a script and say, like, you sent it to the industry of competitions or stuff? Like, when did that start to happen? Was the like, first time it happened was... Um, so what happened, 2014, I sent a script to Screen Education Edinburgh. They were doing a thing called Take Five. We're all looking for five-page scripts. And then they didn't have any money, but it would give you, like, a really good equipment to go make it. Right. And they picked me and two other filmmakers, so they were doing pretty well. So there was Sean Hughes and Lucas Cow, And uh, the three of us went and made our films. Now, because, we like, three years were quite inexperienced at the time. Three years weren't happy with our films, so we never released them. Right. So I had this film in the can for until last year, and it ended up on... BBC Scotland's new channel, that channel, man, right. they, they put it on. Right. So it was weird, this film that I made, that I just never was fully happy with, ended up on the BBC right. Scotland. But that was one of the oh, first I've ones. Seen that. Uh, that was one of the very first ones, man, um, yeah. that I ever made and, uh, properly. Uh, but that was the first time I made a script. But that same year, I, I, think, I think that probably helped, like, that gave like, people say, oh, he must be an alright writer. So I sent yeah. a script to a f- competition, Sigma were doing, it was a thing called Jump Cut, where basically they were just training people up. So essentially everybody had major curls but he picked my script and made it and then that got a couple of BAFTA nominations and that really kind of like solidified me. Yeah, 100% yeah, it definitely yeah. made me like that. opened the doors up for me and yeah. I mean like yeah. it's uh, yeah. although it was quiet after that there was like a year of nothingness and then I kind of go back into the game a bit but uh, but that definitely helped 100% right. like, that was a big help but I've asked you this before but yeah. you, threw, you know in terms of like did you get a lot of creative control Right you know, the surprisingly, I did. So, so, so the problem, the, the one of the issues, it's an issue with every film, is it had a lot of producers. So we had like three producers and the director, and there was a bunch of notes coming in. And the director to protect me eventually said, "Look, man, this isn't. He? He's, he's quite new to this. Right. I'll funnel all the notes through me." Yeah, yeah. And he, so everything ended up coming through him, and um, and he was great, man. Like it was great working with him, and. Uh, he really kind of just championed me and kind of really helped me. And he really did, like, I must admit, like, it is the film I wrote. Like, the, yeah. so I was, like, the very first draft to what it became is a, like, there is differences, but they, like, they let me take it where I needed to go. They, yeah, they, they, yeah. they were never really hands on with it. Yeah, yeah. And I, so it was pretty, it was pretty, it was a really kind of good experience. It was, like, it could have went a lot worse. But I will be honest, man, like, I remember being just had this whole horrible fear, like, like even I'd never done anything proper, I was like, I'm not going to fuck my film up, man. This is going to be ruined. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to. Aye, I'm not busy. <laughs> you have to just let it go. You have to let it go, definitely. Wait, but it's just know. such a hard thing. So see when you're that new to it, yeah. You don't, and then when you see the first cut, nobody warned you. It's like it's like that and Concrete and Flowers, the two two films, kind of back to back. Nobody warned you that you're never going to like the first cut. Oh, it's of the just film. Like the assembly. Really ah, you're never going to like an assembly. You know. The assembly's always shite. Yeah, Nobody yeah. warns you that. Yeah, so when yeah. I saw them, I was like, it's to see what's missing and there's something else needed. Definitely, but I just yeah. abandoned. I was like, oh, these are these are it's awful. Like sculpture just thrown ah, away. Definitely, arms, you definitely. Know, and then we'll get details later. Hundred percent. So yeah. I was, I just thought I was a terrible writer and filmmaker. Every time I saw a first cut, and it wasn't until after I saw the, eventually the final cut of Job yeah. of Michael that I was like, oh fuck, this is yeah. pretty. Yeah, I watched it, and it's one of those films that you can just, you just. When you get, sometimes you watch short films and you go, right, I'm out here. But right. when you watch it, you get caught up. You just want to fall. What's going on today? What's oh, going that's on great, man. I appreciate that. Happening? Definitely, definitely. You know, and then you get hooked and you, watch, you keep watching, you keep watching. And it's like you're, you're hanging out with characters and you're going, and you, it just carries you right to the end. Nah, I you definitely know. There's, appreciate no many, that, man. there's no many shots. And, and, you know, you think a short film would be, I mean, it's 20 minutes long or something like that, isn't it? Aye, but I think it's. But you think it'd be easy, or it's only 20 minutes or 50, but there's so many films that you go, I'm out here after. A minute. No, definitely. You know I, mean? I so know, definitely. Was great. And oh, the actors were great in it as well. That was one of the big things. Ah, he's um, great. I Brian McCarthy, man. He's been actually like, a good champion of me as well. He's looked really like, always stayed in touch, which means a lot. See, when you're just starting out in the right. Navy, you feel like nobody's getting back to you. Yeah, the yeah. people that stay in touch, you remember, you know what I mean? Right, they really right. do remember. Well, like, good actors remember good writing. That's the main thing. Right? Ah, I hope writers, that's true, man. I definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aye, because he was in Rob Roy and stuff. Aye, like Ghost in the Darkness, too. Speed 2. He's been a mad Speed thing. Two, aye, aye, Speed 2, I know. Aye, Speed 2. That was a money gig, wasn't it? Oh, 100 percent aye, definitely. But he's done some. You know what he's in that I really loved, man? Low Winter Sun, the original Low Winter Sun. It was a Channel 4, like one half thing. It was him and that uh, Mark Strong. 
It's a really solid, like, uh, really dark, corrupt cop. He's one of those actors that I always, as a filmmaker, I always remember as a really great actor. But a lot of people don't know his name. Ah, such, definitely. But always, oh, that's that, that guy, you know, you know. I feel like he's got more interest as he's got older as well. I feel like there's a guy. Because he's got rougher look. There's a danger to I've him. I've always been watching this. No, but he's I got, know, but it's true, it's, but it's like, good, he's good almost way. got that like Harvey Keitel you know, thing now, where aye, he's like, he can aye. play the bad guy really well now. Aye, and definitely. Like, there's a aye, danger to him that I really do, like. Aye, you know. Definitely. Um, so after, after that, what was the next sort of, what was your next? What was my next thing? So it was kind of quiet for a while, and then I did a... Went out, got a bunch of people together, and we shot a short film called Chibbed, which was my attempt to... Uh, I saw that, yeah. It was my attempt to kind of like... Uh, I was obsessed with Alan Clark. I loved the film. I loved uh, oh, I, I loved Scum. Alan Clark as well. I was obsessed yeah. with him, and uh, I saw Elephant. We had seen Bob and... I, I definitely... I, I bagged up in that one. Yeah, that was... Uh, before the internet, that's all we had. Get stuck in, Bob. Go get stuck in. But I chibbed, man. So essentially, it was just... I wanted to make a film that kind of didn't have... It was kind of out of context, kind of like a moment in time with no context. Like violence without context was my thing. Like copying, like a love letter to elephant almost. Yeah, yeah. The difference is like there's a difference between forty IRA UDA shootings back to back to one guy being slashed. Aye, <laughs> you know what I mean? Aye, aye. So I lack the gravitas. But I'm like, and people do. People seem to like it, and like I'm always surprised when people say they like it because because it, it, it it's more kind of cinematic in the way that it doesn't really tell you much and it's not got a character just, no, it just it's, is it's, what it is, it is. Yeah, definitely. It's, like a, it's like you're coming down in a moment it's almost like a mid-piece I definitely you know and I mean? uh, the one thing I'm really mm-hmm. proud of that was uh, the guy who shot that Seth uh, Ukbas who's uh, worked on I think, I think he may have worked on Drop with Michael but he did chub he, he was on he was focus pulling on boys night but he was just really talented and this, I think that was when I kind of found my my look almost like yeah, my, yeah. What, I, what I want things to look like that was kind of at that aye. moment because it lets it's like a novel, it lets the audience fill in their imagination. What's going on? That, that's that was kind of the plan, right? And plus, it, to be honest, man, like, uh, no, it, but I just really needed something that I could just fill them in one night and aye, um, not aye. call them too many favors at that point. Aye, I mean, that aye. was kind of the go way as well. But it, I, man, it ended up on BBC iPlayer for the year. That was a good boost. Great. That kind of oh. helped us out. I'd saw it. Aye, I, I, was it? When was it? Been a couple of years ago. Aye, I think I think we did. I saw it then. Aye, definitely. You know, aye, it was a while back. Aye, aye. You know. Um, and then what was that? When, when did is this? When was Boys Night? Was Boys it? Night was so Boys Night was made um, <clears throat> for SFTN at the end of twenty eighteen. So I so we shot that in November twenty eighteen. Then it premiered at Edinburgh and last year in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So that was there was a wee bit of gap between that. I so that was um, I twenty twenty eighteen we shot that. And I know I've asked you before, but I just want to expand the week because we never talked much about ah, it before yeah. and a bit the actor you're working as well but it, 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 so you got that funded was that like a Aye, that was my very first ever mm. funded like thing with me directing it so dropping off Michael was funded but I was just a writer Aye. I didn't have like, uh, they didn't have any money to pay me or anything but it was a funded film so the money was put on the screen so it looked Aye. great so Aye. everything else I've did has kind of been just no budget Aye. other than dropping off Michael and Boys Night really yeah um so what was the experience of that was um, it's interesting yeah. it's weird like I, I think the main thing that like I always wonder this like um, I was talking to a guy recently and he was saying to me like it doesn't feel like there's that, there, it doesn't feel there has to be a difference in the standard of quality with something that's no budget and something that has I, got a budget yeah. I think the main thing is there's a lack of guilt like you don't feel as guilty telling people what to do or you know because like, everybody's getting paid something like, that's the main thing like there's, there's a bit of pressure off that way you feel a wee bit more like you like uh, you've got a wee bit more freedom as a director to kind of guide things. Like I Aye. think a bit easier, but um, it's interesting. It is interesting. Like, um, like it, still, it's, it still gets a different level for a no budget because you're still getting like in no budgets for me. The way when I pick people, I'm not picking highly skilled camera people. No. I'm not picking highly skilled sound people. No, definitely. Mad criteria is enthusiasm. 100%, that's certainly good. Enthusiasm would rather be right that. Aye. And that's it. So it can be students, as long as they're there they're, they're, and they're willing aye. to learn. Are they up to play? That's it, definitely. Exactly. That's it, so when, you're, when you're going to a bit of budget, yeah. you're getting people that are doing it every day. No, definitely, um, definitely. Aye, aye. So it's like, so both sides can be good, but you, you know you're probably going to get a good quality finished project and you don't need to fucking shoot again, like in a lot of no budget things. No, definitely. I know it's true. I mean? No, it's so true. That's true. Um, I know, but, definitely. It was, a, it was a good buzz and it did feel like a step up, like um, just having that many people. Like it was the biggest crew I've worked with yeah. just having that many people yeah. on like uh, on a shoot there was. Which is actually somebody somebody used to ask me that, oh you'd be scared if you got a big crew of it. It's like if I get two hundred crew, I would be so unterrified. You used to total up it. You know why? Because you, 
we see when you're doing something with no budget, you're fucking doing everything yourself almost. Aye, definitely. And definitely, that's stressful. Aye. But when you've got other people that are skilled in those areas, 100%. Then aye, you can man. just focus on, on the one thing. Aye, definitely. You know I mean? I definitely. Like, yeah, I just, that's what I feel anyway. Well, it's so know. true. Like having an AD, you know. like to handle all the. An AD is the they're, they're amazing. I just have Definitely. You know. It's just the stress. So like, cause it, cause that when, you're, when there's something with no budget, you can't do all the AD. I mean, aye, like, aye. We're going to talk about Cameron Jack now because he's going to fucking kill us because we never mentioned him. I know, that's true, man. I swear to God, I've done. We're so fast that time jumping through them. I've did for like three or four or five <laughs> podcasts and the, the people I never mentioned are Cameron or Curtis. Do you know Shane. why? And, but as well, he's, he was so yeah. great. I mean, fucking Oh, he's amazing. Actor. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's just, it's you like, know. you don't even have to talk about it. Like, like, he makes the film. Like, he's amazing. Yeah, like, I didn't yeah. really buy the. Uh... So, how was Cameron? What you work with? Oh, amazing, man. Genuinely, like, um, we met some great actors, man. Like, people I've been a fan of my whole life. To, yeah. to play that role, like uh, like actors from all over, like, but people that I really admired my whole life. But when Cameron walked in, I just knew, like uh, we met him on the flying duck, and as soon as he walked in, I just knew, like he was, like I just seen it right away. Like he reminded me of my dad, like because yeah. the boys' nights kind of the, about my mum, dad, me, kind of. So I wanted everybody to kind of look a bit like a counterpart, but more than just look like him. He kind of just had that energy where. It's hard to do, like, he could, he could definitely tell he can handle himself, but he's yeah. also just, a, there's an there's a underlying niceness to him. There's a, there's a vulnerability in a softness. Definitely, the yeah. Thing, brute. 100%, that's it. <laughs> definitely, that's exactly it. And I think so you, could, you could go the other way when it's the dark kind of brute, but you want somebody that's kind of able to live. But it's humanity in there. Definitely, 100%. Like Ray Winston, well, Ray, no, Ray Winston didn't he have so much fucking humanity no by mouth. Oh, but, but weirdly, man, that's but, what I sent. I you know, sent I've, no, I've only seen it once and seen yeah, it for years, but after Cameron, revisited, yeah. you know. I actually yeah. sent Cameron scenes from Nobody Mouth for this, and I sent it to uh, the DOP. Just in terms of one of my favourite scenes in Nobody Mouth is when he he goes back to the flat and he's arguing up at the neighbours one day and everything. Yeah. And uh, it's just so raw and real, and that was a big influence on Boys Night, like uh, that, just aye, the, the aye. moments like that. Like, uh, no, but I thought the casting was great because of that, because if you just get somebody that's a brute, that's not going to work. No, it's definitely. Aye. No, Cameron, yeah. he's just such a lovely guy, man. Uh, mm. And yeah, I just really broke his back for us. Like, there was a lot, like, I can't remember, uh, I think it was like the second day of shooting, the film opens, uh, the character smashes up the car and punches the wing winner. And I remember we had them in Peters Hill Community Centre, that was a unit base, and he's sitting mm. in there waiting. And I go up to talk to him and he's like, hey, so what's happening, man? Have you got like a sponge yeah. mirror and stuff set yeah. up and like, is everything kind of softened? And I was like, nah, you're going to have to punch us. <laughs> And he fucking he cut, he cut his hand open, man. Like he punched the mirror off for real. He punched the radio for real, and like cut his he hand. In a zone. Definitely, you know, but a lot of actors would have been like, "Fuck oh, this! You, I, get, I, you better go fix I, this." I, and I, you're gonna talk to me, but he was just so up for just like, uh, yeah. and then just even just in terms of shooting, I was like, um, like he, he could have just said, "Look, man, we've, we've did a bit," but he was there till like fucking, especially the last day. It was like got to like three in the morning, whatever, yeah, man. Like yeah. he was there. He, he, he was just willing to break his back for his hundred percent. Like he did. Beautifully. Same with Custy, man. Custy's amazing. Custy was in Dropper of Michael. And uh, Custy, a strain, strain yeah, yeah, and she's yeah. just so fucking, she's just great, man. She just wanted a kind of just a really strong, strong, strong Scottish actor. And, uh, and the young boy, did, have you, was he, had he acted before? He had, man. We found him. So actually, the lead actor from Concrete and Flowers. <laughs> Kyle, aye, Kyle uh, yeah, yeah, Kyle, man. So the lead actor from Concrete and Flowers um, wound up becoming a drama teacher at St Andrews in Carlton. Right. So we were looking for a young, yeah, a young kid that kind of from a real kind of like a working class background, somebody that kind of was like me at that age, and uh, through him we went into St Andrews. We auditioned to all these kids in this class, and like generally me, the producer and uh, the production, I think she's production manager, uh, Joanne, the three of us were there, and we just seen it right away. Like it was just the way Kyle carried himself. He was like a little leader. Yeah. Like he just had such, such a natural. Yeah. Just really natural. Everything about him was natural. Like everybody yeah. else, you, like all, 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 all of them were great actors, but a lot of the other kids played it like, you're a bad dad, blah, blah. Uh, you got the feeling in it that he saw this before, this is before, and he's just dealing he with it. He loved his demand. I said, the love was there. Like, you uh, could yeah, tell, even yeah. when like, he was playing it, because uh, he had to act against his teacher, man, and he, the way he played it was like, oh, come on, man, like, you're my yeah. fucking dad, turn up. Yeah, and it yeah. just, like, he just had such a real naturalism to him, man. Like, I wanted, like, I'd put K on everything, man. Like, and, uh, a calmness to him in that film as well. Where this, this, the fact that he was calm and kind of getting on with it, with his father's like, fucking built dog. No, definitely, definitely, you know I mean? I, yeah, definitely. No, you just, it's just, some films that you watch just click right away and you go, oh, fuck, I like that. Do you know what I mean? It just, it's just something. Oh, thank you, man. You I appreciate that. But you put, it's, it, you can feel that there's personal stuff in there, but you can feel that it's, it's a combination of other lives, kind of, you know, you said, I remember you saying it's know your father. 
No, it's, definitely, uh, aye, no, definitely. But at the same yeah. time in Scotland, we've all seen oh, 100%, fucking guys aye, like that. Oh, 100%, aye, definitely, definitely, I mean, no, definitely. You just catch them in the street, what are you fucking Oh, 100%, aye, goal, definitely, you know? definitely, um, definitely, definitely. And it's that side where, uh, and the humour, I think that's important. Cause oh, I'm, yeah, that was my biggest, my biggest fear you know, that it was going to turn into, like, there's a lot of drunk dad Scottish short films they yeah, out there yeah yeah but none of them are really funny like I really wanted to make sure like we get that like everything even Jordan of Michael like I always try I feel I feel like the only film that doesn't get any laughs that I've made that which isn't funny is Chipped and I think that movie when I've got a wee bit of like uh, it's because you've not got probably, all the characters to no to get to learn the definitely you know, it's, it's, it's more like a cinematic, cinematic thing definitely but I'm a mean. big fan of just injecting humour in it every time it's important it's, it's what's in life Def- I feel like it's very Glasgow it's a very Glasgow right, right, right. like, even in the right. darkest moments we're always right. finding a way to bring the levity out of course like, but uh, that's human nature I mean even watching movies like Goodfellas they're almost like fucking comedy 100% you, you laugh definitely you laugh when you watch it 100% mean? definitely yeah. and that's why I like to put it it's like because there's so many there's so many Scottish films that you go, okay, there's a lot of great Scottish films and yeah. we've seen The Drunk Before and we've seen this, um, but they try to get so serious because serious means that you're good and you're a word worthy and whatever, whereas you're like, no, fuck that, this is the way that this kind of world is and there is humour. Ah, definitely, is, definitely, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, and yeah. that's what I liked it, but it was, it's like fucking entertaining as well. No, I appreciate and, that, man, yeah. it's, you know, um, and that's what I liked about it, you know. I appreciate um, that, man. So has that opened doors for you more, um, boys um, and or... or do you know it's weird? I think it has. I think it has. Um, I think it has. I go into a, a programme down in London, a, a writer's room thing, a BBC writer's room thing, and that got me like a, a writing commission, and I think that opened up a lot of doors, weirdly enough. But it's like I feel like I, the Boys Night has in a strange way, but I, like I, I still feel like um, I'm not completely taken, like uh, seen as a director yet in a weird way. I, I mean, right. It's just my perception of it. Like I'm not right. completely. Like, I don't think I'm up for any directing gigs or anything like that yeah. in a weird way, but uh, as a writer, I seem to be... My, my name's out there a bit more, but... Uh, I think it's because... I think people are looking for writers more than directors. Yeah, maybe that could be. Yeah, no, there's a lot of directors, there's a lot of directors yeah. write scripts mm-hmm. that they just pull in. The gigs, no, the hacks, do you know what I mean? And I do Look, wonder about that, whether I could direct something no. that I didn't write. Like, I, I, am, I am under the same as well, yeah. do you know what I mean? But, but directors look at all the people that direct soaps and whatever, they come in, it's a job. I definitely, and, and, aye. You know, but writers are hard, good writers are hard to find, I think. Yeah. I know you've done Spiral, because um, that'd be interesting to talk about. Oh, definitely, aye, yeah. Um, is that the next, uh, that is the next? I next, think it was, aye, aye, aye. Spiral, Spiral was uh, after Boys Night Man, definitely. So, so w- when did you decide that, because Spiral is, uh, is the 48 hour film project. Aye. Where you make a, where, you tell, you tell. Oh, definitely, so it's a 48 hour film project, they do it in cities all over the world. Um, you show up on a Friday, you get a the genre, a prop, a line of dialogue and a character name. You have to write it on a Friday night, shoot it on a Saturday, edit it through Saturday to Sunday maybe, and then hand the hard drive in to the wherever the place right. is on a Sunday. So they do it all over the world in every city. Um, I wasn't going to do it this year. I was actually on the train with one of the actors from Spiral, uh, a great writer himself, uh, Thomas McCrudentosh, and uh, we were coming back from a brof, and somebody asked me to write in their team write for their team and right. then they, they cancelled on me right. and uh, and I was like I, I wasn't really in it anyway because right. it's always just too much stress I've written a few of them in the past right. and they never turn out great right. so my heart wasn't really in it and then Tosh was like you should just make your own team man just make your own team just do it yourself and I wasn't going in and it was like a week before and I just for fucking it cost like £30 or something to make a team and I was like I just I did it and then I planned for like so they give you a genre so you like there you go on the Friday and they pick a genre out and uh, we got sci-fi right which I wasn't expecting, but uh, I literally had a wee paragraph written for every genre, like we could do this, we could do this, even musical. The only one I didn't know was on the list was sci-fi. Yeah. And so when we go to sci-fi, I was like, fuck. Aye. I and remember I, you saying, don't gaze fucking musicals. Aye, that was it, man, <laughs> definitely. I, I, know. Aye, I just didn't know how to deal with it. But uh, it worked out, man, genuinely. Like, so wrote the script at night, it's like, kind of like um, Glasgow taxi driver meets Groundhog Day's my yeah, elevator yeah. pitch. Um, Wrote it that night, we shot it the next day, and I genuinely think it's probably as mental as it was. You were right, there, man. It was right, absolutely right. insane. I guess the most fun I've had making something like just in terms of just that complete freedom, this, hey, complete this is what insanity. I always, like, always stick with filmmakers though. That's where for me the stuff that I've learned. I went out and made stuff that was never seen and just binned. But the actual fun of just going out and fucking oh, so doing great, it, man. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, it's almost like it's like Peyton. Ah, fucking, we'll scrub yeah. and we've got. And it's the, it's the, it's the having the real deadline that's good. Yeah. In a way. Oh, definitely, it's so true. You and the, the, the novelty of the forty-hour thing. What's great about it is, 
you can get people involved because they know it's a weekend of their life. Yeah. They're up for that. And you're going to see it a few They're days They're going later. to see it a few days later. So there's that instant gratification of it. It's, yeah, yeah. it's made, you've made something. Yeah. And uh, I never expected this. We won every award, man. We won, I know. Uh, I won Best I know. Ensemble because of you, I think. Uh, best <laughs> oh, best Actor, pretty. Best Writer, Best Director, Best Film, Best Song. Best Song? Best Use of it won, Line. It won, maybe. was it eight awards it won? Ah, it was yeah, crazy, it was man. That's ah, absolutely insane, man. Yeah. Um, and then it played it, because it won there, they played at Film Palooza, which was in Rotterdam last week, and we went over and seen it. Right. And surprisingly, man, it played really well. Like the, the biggest laugh it got was your line, man. The, <laughs> it's one of my favourite things I've ever captured on film, man. Completely improvised. It was, uh, <laughs> it's just it's so good. It's just so good. I didn't want to spoil it, but uh, the, the good thing, the good thing about uh, it was that day that everybody's under the same. Uh, you're turning up. You don't know what you're gonna do. No, definitely. Yeah, play. yeah, yeah. But you're shooting it, so everybody's into it, so that makes it, we're on the same boat here. Ah, so 100%. Just fucking no, do definitely, but I, what, what, I think you and Connor, man, like, the things that make you so great as actors is like, like there's nothing natural about that setting. Like, if you, if you had a budget, you can get yourself in the mindset Absolutely, and everything. Absolutely, you know. But like, I, I, you just you had know. to like, just basically turn it on, like, this is what's happening. And you it's just so real, in, man. It's like, like it's like when I finished, I went and you go, oh God, I, I could have done this, I could have done so much better. I could have fucking shut up. We just turned up. I didn't done have, it. No, so definitely. Go, I had prep. I could have done this and I could have done that. But that's the funny thing. That no, you go and you just throw. You throw yourself into the deep end. Deep end, definitely. Yeah, I, no, definitely. Um, but when you announced that you're going to, do, I don't know why. I just had a great feeling about. It. I thought, I think this is going to turn out good. Yeah, you know surprisingly, I mean? like genuinely, yeah. like even better than boys, they almost like. Uh, Nobody's really had the bad word to say about it. Like genuinely, it's like I might get, I might people might be going easy on it a little bit because they know it's a forty-hour film. But even people that don't know that, like it's a very like people but really can, like you it. You can still say it's a film that somebody's funded. Hundred percent, definitely. So there's, okay. no, there's no line where you go, "That's the funded one." That's not no, it really, doesn't. It doesn't feel. Honest. It doesn't feel no. too cheap. But because you had a great, great crew on it. Oh, I do, well. definitely. Yeah. Gavin, the shot, it's absolutely mm. amazing, man. Absolutely. Uh, which is mega Yeah, 100%, just know. so much down for fun. Dave Brown, who came yeah. on, that was my first time working with Dave, man. We've kind of we've, we've yeah. became a team and ever Connor since. Connor's just so good, man. Connor's so really mean, one of my favourite you know, actors ever. Like, uh, Connor was in the Neds, wasn't he? he Connor was the lead in Neds, he was in Catch Me Daddy, which is, I think is one of the, the better, uh, one of the best British films of the past 20 years. Uh, and Connor's just great, man. Connor's just so, like... Um, <clears throat> He's just such, got such an intensity and a vulnerability to him as well. He's just really, really talented, man, and uh, really switched on. Like, yeah. generally, I've made a, we made another short film at the end of Christmas last year. We kind of treated it like a four-hour thing. It was like just in and out. We're shooting in the city centre. But um, there was at one point where a character, uh, a character, one of the people in the crew, didn't bring the prop they were supposed to bring. Right. And it really, like, fucked the whole scene. Like, yeah. well, and... and uh, and I was just like, oh, I don't even know. Like, I don't even know. I can't, like, my uh, mind was gone. Uh, like, I was on coding all from my stomach because I can't even, I can't, I can't, I can't even fix this in the fly. Connor, like, within a minute was like, no, we'll do this, we'll do this. Uh, and, like, uh, not only did he, like, like, fix the problem he had, they made the whole thing even better. Like, he uh, just had such, he just got such good instincts. That is the thing I find that, uh, you know yourself, it's Kubrick always said this in problem solving when you're doing things, filmmaking is a bit problem solving and all. Yeah, well, 100%, that's all it is. Creatively yeah. problem solving, right? Definitely, money, yeah. Too much prep at the problem. Because yep. too much prep and too much money, we know how fucking big movies turn out blockbusters. It's, it's a fine line. No, it's true. There's a, you know, there is such a thing as polishing something too much, I believe. Like, oh, definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what most... Hollywood made a big polished turds. I mean, aye, it's fucking so, up. that's true, I mean, it's true. Yeah, it. Definitely, aye, definitely. I mean, um, it's a fine balance, though. It really is. Um, but that was... That, that, for me, on that, that was, that was really fun to watch. It was fun to just be a wee part of it, you know. No, oh, it was so good, man. Um, but genuinely, man, that's like uh, anything I've ever made. Your part in that has got the <laughs> biggest reaction and it's such a buzz to see it. And it was just such a buzz to see it play. It played in Rotterdam and just the fact that... Like, I saw got, a wee clip on you. Yeah, man, I, I filmed it on Instagram, man, yeah. Like, oh, fuck, I'm still laughing in Rotterdam. But genuinely, still watching, man, you know, like, there was no. not... Like, there was not many mm. British people in that room you're talking about. It was all Americans, it was all uh, Germans, it was all, like, worldwide, and everybody blew up at that line. They all got it. And even though, like, the thing that I... It wasn't even that I was worried about... Not, I was just worried about the Scottishness of it. But aye, it's just the, the humour just travelled really well. The good thing is it's a very, very visual film as well, so wouldn't it wouldn't Definitely, no, it's true, that's true. You know no, I mean? definitely, definitely. So they get an idea. Aye, no, 100%, 100%. So, right, we repeat. So, um, again, that's where your... I think your international appeal can, could be there as well, because it is... 
you know, we would go. Because look, if you've got something that's Scottish, that I'm saying with my Queen Lord thing, right? Yeah. But it goes on to Amazon, then it kicks into the subtitles. No, definitely. So aye, aye. Hundred percent. You know I'm mean? actually pretty sure when I you watched know. it, it had subtitles. I think. Yeah, you know. yeah. So it's the same way. If your stuff was on there, the Scottish subtitles going on. No, definitely. Aye, definitely. Yeah. That's the thing, too, man. Like, um, I think I just need to accept that subtitles is the way it's going to be. Because I'm like, I, I don't want to. I feel like the reason I've got to where I'm at right now is purely because I have been uncompromising and I'm all showing aside to like a, a world that isn't seen a lot. Yeah. And I, and I don't dull down the, the, right. the way we talk, you know what I mean? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and even Crime Lord, man, I think Crime Lord would great, but it's like, the, like I can, you can tell, like it doesn't feel scripted, man. The performances are very naturalistic and he's saying it the way he would see it in real life. Like that's the big thing for me. Stevie always says to me, oh, we, we improvise when we do interviews and we improvise and people say, oh, I love the improvisation. I was like, fucking... You don't improvise, Stevie. <laughs> we actually, it's actually written. It's actually written like that. And I don't mean that, I'm not giving a bitch with that I wrote it. I don't mean no, that. No, no, no. I just I mean that, but when people say, oh, improvise stuff, there's still a script. I still, I, I still think you should have a script. Oh, definitely. No, there has to be a baseline, definitely. Yeah, but I think the, a, the important you know, thing is just, just mm. like, it has to feel real. Even if it's just changing yeah. the way one word is said, like, yeah, you want yeah. to. You want that? Well, it's that what I like to be you, you know, it's, and I work with you, just a small little bit. I, I just get that feeling when I had you seen on the set. You get that freedom with actors that, you know, although you're a writer and you know what you want, yeah. some writers will go, no, uh, you can't change that at all, but you get the film with you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, the script is never gospel, man. As I mean? soon as, like, yeah. I write the script, the script's good, like, to know. There's some this, facts that you can tell. Oh, the scripts, there's things like that, this has to be said yeah, yeah, or whatever, I, but, I, like, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm a man. My whole thing is like just taking credit for the actors like yourself. Like just coming up with something even better than what's in the script. <laughs> to genuinely, like, well, uh, I, think, I, I think actors. I think that's the. You know, I, if I'm working with actors, I want them to come up with something better. Oh, definitely. Or yeah, a yeah. camera guy, which I don't want the camera guys because yeah. I'm at budgets. But if I do, I want them to come up with a better shot. If they don't, Aye. there's my shot. Yeah, if yeah. you don't come up with a better line, there's a line. Line, I definitely. But yeah. it's, I think it's their job to come up with something. So because that's a really collaborative. It's like for me personally. I don't always know exactly what I want, but I know a thousand percent what I don't want. Aye, that's so that leaves no, creative freedom yeah. for everybody. Yeah, it's so true, no, definitely. Suge yeah. Production design, suggest that to me then. Aye, Because if you're so fixed, then no, you can't, then you're not gaining any control to anybody. No, definitely, you're definitely. You're actually taking the control away, aye. which is a bit megalomania, you know what I mean? No, it's true, 100%, you know, definitely, um, aye, definitely. I've got that feeling with you that if you come up with something, there's a loosening state, oh, but you still are yeah. steering the ship when it's oh, supposed definitely. to go. Oh, definitely, yeah, I'm just a big fan of the whole improvisation, like, like we'll talk about Cassavetti. He's like, I just love that. Like, just that everything just feels like it's a real conversation. Everything just feels like Aye, it's happening. Yeah, I know you're about, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm a big fan of that. You know, 